Welcome back to Teton Todd's Mountain Adventures. Uh, we're here inside uh, my man cave today. Uh, the weather's kind of bad outside. Hoped we could get outside and do some filming today, but uh, a little bit uh, wet and rainy. So I decided to come inside today and do a little talk about history and research. When you're researching the mountain man period, you want to find uh, the facts as they were. You need to look to three different sources, particularly the journals and diaries of people who were there. People like Osborne Russell, James Kleiman, Zenas Leonard, Joe Meek, Nathaniel Wyeth, all produced diaries or wrote diaries and we have those today. Very valuable sources, primary sources that we can look to for good information about the way uh, things were, were for, for the mountain men at the time, the, the material goods that they had available to them, and just life in general. The other thing we want to look at is fur trade records of the caravans that came to the rendezvous. Unfortunately on the internet we can find those. If you go to, uh, if you do a search on mountain men in the fur trade you'll find Dean Rudy's excellent site and on that site you'll find a lot of fur trade records. So you can see exactly what uh, the itemized lists were of things they brought to the rendezvous. Uh, in the future I'll be reviewing a book by a couple of friends about those uh, fur trade records. But today we want to talk about the third area of research that you can find and that's artists who were there or painted pictures of the time. And the three primary artists that come to mind are George Catlin, Carl Bodmer, and Alfred Jacob Miller. Today we're going to concentrate on the third one, Alfred Jacob Miller. Now Miller was a painter who was hired by a Scottish nobleman named William Drummond Stewart who came to the actual 1837 rendezvous. Sort of as a, a safari, you might call it today, where he wanted to come out to the West. Uh, he'd heard about the, the, the West of the United States and the adventures, the, the Native American peoples, and he wanted to come out and see it for himself. So he came over to the, to the United States and hooked up with the caravan that was going out to the 1837 rendezvous. And he was wise enough to know that in order to capture the experience, he would have to have a painter come along and do sketches and then later do paintings to hang in his castle back in Scotland. So uh, in New Orleans, he was lucky enough to run into a young man named Alfred Jacob Miller, who was a painter, and he hired him to come along on the, on the caravan. So we have uh, primary documents, uh, or primary documentation done by Alfred Jacob Miller at the rendezvous. His field sketches are invaluable to look at the, the precise detail of mountaineer clothing, equipment, and the life. So let's quickly talk about a few of the books we can find today. The first one I'll talk about is The West of Alfred Jacob Miller. I don't know if you can see that very well or not. Uh, you can find these. I, I found this one. Uh, they're getting a little bit scarce, uh, a little bit expensive, a good hardback like this. But you can find them on uh, many book search engines and also uh, I think I found this on eBay. Um, can't remember how much it costs but it's got, got a lot of the black and white uh, copies of the paintings of Miller and also has a little narration about each painting done by Miller himself. So extremely valuable uh, reference material. The West of Alfred Jacob Miller. Uh, secondly and perhaps a little bit better uh, than the West of Alfred Jacob Miller is Alfred Jacob Miller Artist on the Oregon Trail. This is done by Ron Tyler. Um, another excellent book. and A good primary source. These two books are must to have in your Fur Trade Research Library. Uh, this one has, I think, more paintings than the West of Alfred Jacob Miller and very well cataloged. So those, those are two, as I said, two, two musts. Now, in addition, you can all, sometimes find gallery uh, collections like this one. This one's called Alfred Jacob Miller Watercolors of the American West from the collection of the Gilcrease Museum in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Now, I might mention that many uh, original Millers are still available in museums throughout the United States. Uh, as I mentioned, this one in uh, Oklahoma. I haven't had the, uh, the privilege of going to that museum yet. However, I was able to visit the Jocelyn Museum in Omaha, Nebraska. It has a number of, of original Millers. Always exciting for, for me and others uh, in, in the historical interpretation world to go and see those original paintings. Um, also, you can find, I think, six different Miller paintings 
in the museum at the University of Wyoming in Laramie, Wyoming. Uh, a friend and I uh, visited there one just by happenstance one year and we were uh, just thrilled to see these original Millers. A couple friends of mine over the years have used the works of Miller to write, to, to do a couple of, of sketchbooks. First one I'm going to talk about is the 1837 sketchbook of the Western Fur Trade by Rex Allen Norman. Now what Rex has done is he's taken uh, original Miller paintings and used them as a, ba a backdrop or a talking point for sketches to do about trapper clothing. So he'll take a Miller painting and then Rex with his great artistic ability was able to redo those uh, a re recreation of the Miller paintings and then talks about in detail uh, each item of clothing starting from hats going through coats pants on down. It's very similar to what we'll be doing here on the on Teton Todd's Wilderness Adventures. So that's a good sketchbook. I know that this one's available through Muzzleloader Magazine. If you go online and do a, a search on Muzzleloader Magazine I know in their store that you can still find that, uh, that sketchbook. That's an excellent, excellent resource. Another one by a friend of mine named Sean Webster, the noted quill worker, is called In the Image of Alfred Jacob Miller. And what Sean's done, similar to what Rex did, is he took Miller paintings as a model and then took modern pictures of trappers or mountaineers and modeled them after the, the Miller painting. Uh, Pose them in a very similar style and then uh, goes through and talks about the same thing, the clothing. Um, I really like this format because it shows you what or how you can duplicate or replicate Miller paintings through modern clothing. Very interesting, very uh, very worthwhile, useful information. So in our world of re recreating, reenacting, and I know that's not probably the the most correct term to use. Uh, probably historical interpretation is better. Um, these kind of resources are, are must to have if we are to accurately create or recreate the, the western fur trapper or the mountaineer. If you don't have these kind of resources and you go by uh, later paintings, say by Russell or Remington, you won't get it quite right and you might as well uh, be uh, portraying a Martian something that doesn't exist as portraying a mountaineer using clothing that didn't exist at the time period using those kind of raw materials. So um, look for those books online as I said you can find them on eBay or you can find them at, at bookfinder.com or any of a, a number of other book search engines. Um, and check back again.